Subaya Vishwanathan and you're watching Let's Talk Health. Folks, no one wants to feel sick. I suspect most of us are very much disinclined to even visit hospitals and yet all of us will during the course of our lifetimes require medical care at one point or another. It could be something that's minor or it could be something that requires a more rigorous and comprehensive set of interventions. Thus, it is imperative that all of us have access to physicians and hospitals we trust. A burning desire to provide healthcare of international standards is what drove Dr. Prathapsi Reddy, chairman of the Apollo Group, to start in 1983, the first Apollo Hospital right here in Chennai. Today, Apollo Hospitals across the country continue to raise the bar on world-class clinical excellence and the practice of integrated team medicine. Now, over the course of the next three months, this flagship health series on Times Now will tackle a variety of health issues as well as introduce you to the Apollo world of tender, loving care. Our team of doctors will help you understand your body, share insights on how diseases manifest, and also show you how many of these better diseases can be cured with the right diagnosis, appropriate cutting edge treatment, and key integrated post-recovery processes. On these shows, you will see many, many inspiring stories that demonstrate how a combination of the best specialists, equipment, and patient family engagement in the treatment recovery process can provide nothing short of the best health outcomes. So folks, without much further ado, let's talk health. Indian gene is peculiar in that over the period of its evolution, we find that it's got a greater propensity to hold back a lot of calories. A stubborn gene, a food rich in high calories, and no exercise has made India the diabetic capital of the world. One in 10 Indians are more prone to develop diabetes mellitus, more so the urban population. You'd be surprised if I tell you that an increase of five to eight kgs in your mid-drive position increases your chances of developing diabetes. To avoid this, we should have a regular health checkup wherein the sugar levels are monitored and the diabetes can be controlled well. In today's episode of Let's Talk Health, doctors from Apollo Hospital will tell you what are the symptoms of diabetes and the ways and means of preventing and treating diabetes. According to a 2014 study, about 62 million people in India have diabetes and this number is projected to rise to 79.4 million by 2030. With such an unexpected surge in the abnormal levels of sugar in Indian people, our country is gradually heading towards a diabetes explosion. But how much do we really know about this silent disorder? Too much of uh, sugar is not good for health and I think it's a reason for diabetes. This Holi Diwali means that we sweet distribution. It means that we don't have sugar, it will diabetes. We all know the stereotype, if you've got diabetes, you must have eaten too much sugar. But the link between sugar and diabetes is not so simple. Sugar itself comes under the category of something we call empty calories. So sugar is something that our body doesn't need at all, sugar. So a lot of people confuse the two terms, sugar and glucose. So glucose is sort of the chemical name, but glucose means glucose is present in everything we eat. Glucose is present in wheat, it's present in millets, it's present in rice, oats, everything has glucose. So ultimately, like I said, the glucose is what our body needs for energy. Sugar, on the other hand, I'm talking about, you know, the white sugar that we see that we add to our tea and coffee, which makes things taste good. Um, sugar uh, by itself, like I said, doesn't give our body any nutrition, nutritional aspects, so it is completely empty calories. <music> Diabetes is a metabolic disorder that perhaps cannot be cured completely. 
but with some significant lifestyle changes, a diabetic person can go on to live a completely healthy and normal life. In diabetes, what happens is either because of a lack of insulin or because the insulin is not able to uh, work properly on the cell, the glucose is not able to enter the cell. So the way I like to think of it always is uh, uh, it's like opening uh, a door to enter the room. So then what happens when you're say locked out of your house, you can't enter through the door, you try and climb in through the window. Okay, so this is exactly what happens in diabetes. So all the sugar levels start building up in the blood, it's not able to enter the cells and then it starts creeping into the cells in other ways. And when it enters the cell uh, in other ways, not the proper way, through the proper channels, if it enters it in other ways, the metabolism of the glucose within the cell is not proper. So it gets broken down into uh, other toxic waste products which is not good for the body. There are three major types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the pancreas stops making insulin. Without insulin, the cells can't get the sugar they need and too much of sugar builds up in the blood. Type 2 diabetes happens when the cells of the body can't use insulin in the right way or when the pancreas can't make enough insulin. Gestational diabetes. It's a temporary condition that occurs during pregnancy and mostly disappears after the delivery. Type 1 diabetes people need insulin to live Without insulin, they die, and they die very quickly. So insulin in people with type 1 diabetes is needed not only to control the blood sugars, it's also needed to keep their acid levels down. There is a particular type of an acid in the blood called a keto acid, which is a breakdown of a fat product in the blood. If they don't drink, if they don't take insulin, even if they don't eat, the blood levels of these keto acids build up in the blood, and that's life-threatening. And then, of course, sugars build up and other things happen. In type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, uh, even if they don't take insulin, even if sugars are not under control, it doesn't kill you that quickly. So there are people with type 2 diabetes who go on to requiring insulin, but insulin is not needed for like the immediate life-saving uh, drug as it is. If one does not pay enough attention, diabetes can go silently undetected for a very long time without any major symptoms. However, these are some of the warning signs of the onset of diabetes. Frequent urination, unusual thirst, extreme hunger, unusual weight loss, feeling tired and irritable, blurred vision, wounds that won't heal. In type 1 diabetes, weight loss even though you are eating more. In type 2 diabetes, tingling pain and numbness in hands and feet. Whether one displays symptoms or not, it is recommended to undergo a diabetes screening test annually for those over 40 years of age. An examination of the feet yearly once is also important. So we look at things like, does the blood flow to the feet okay? And there's something called a Doppler examination and we measure the ratio of the pressure in the arms to the pressure in the legs, the pressure within the blood vessels in the legs. And with that we are able to pick up if the blood flow to the fetus uh, lower than normal or it's compromised, we can pick that up and institute measures. Same way we pick up uh, problems with the nerve sensation in the feet. Uh, is there vibration perception normal? Is the heat perception normal? Is the position perception normal? Uh, there is also the type of testing called uh, pressure mat, where people are asked to walk on a, uh, on, on a particular uh, special type of a mat, which determines how much pressure that these people exert with their feet. So, all these are basically an effort to help us pick up what is called a high-risk food. And the eye checkup is something that is missed very commonly. So for example, when I do my uh, rounds in the hospital and we look after people who are being admitted with diabetes due to other reasons, I ask them usually, when was your last eye checkup? And quite a few of them, even in this day and age, say, oh, either I've never had an eye checkup or I had an eye checkup done four years ago. So the importance of an annual eye checkup in people with diabetes, even when you don't have complaints, it has to be emphasized. It's very, very essential. In this episode, we look at stories of three individuals who are living with diabetes and learn about the key factors that prevent other health complications associated with diabetes. If you walk into any room, you can be sure that you will find at least about one in five to ten people with diabetes, which is a big number. What is more alarming and more worrying is in our country, so far most of the diabetes was the type 2 diabetes. 
we are seeing more people now developing the type 1 diabetes or the insulin dependent diabetes. Farhana Begum was a young woman who was happily settled when she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. सेवेंटीन ईयर्स से शुगर है मेरे को फर्स्ट मेरा वेट लॉस्ट हुआ इसके बाद मैं थोड़ा काम फिजिकल वर्क कर रही थी उसमें लेके मैं समझ गई थी इसमें वेट लॉस हो गया समझ के फिर उसके बाद देखे तो थोड़ा भूख ज़्यादा हो गई थी और उसके बाद यूरिन जाना ज़रा थोड़ा ज़्यादा हो गया था उसके बाद मैं जाके चेक करी चेक करने में से डॉक्टर बोले नहीं आपको शुगर डायबिटिक आया है बोल के डायबिटिक वन है आपका इसलिए आप है ना इंसुलिन लेना आ करके बोल के अब मैं इंसुलिन में हूँ मैं When I saw her initially, she was about 34, 35 years old, and uh, she had already had this type of diabetes called type 1 diabetes or insulin requiring diabetes, which was diagnosed when she was about 25 years old. Having type 1 diabetes meant that she would have to take three insulin shots daily for the rest of her life. In this type of diabetes, if insulin is one day, you have to take insulin for the rest of your life. Yes, you have to take insulin for the rest of your life. And being a homemaker and mother of three kids, the journey was not going to be easy. In 2006, after my father got expired, uh, so we have to shift here to Chennai. Uh, my, my myself, mother, and uh, my two sisters. Her responsibility was more. She has to play the role of a father and mother. She has now been living with the diabetes almost for about 25 years with that type of diabetes. She's been doing remarkably well. Her husband sadly passed away, and that was like a big setback. You know, and I was wondering whether she would, you know, slip back into being, you know, not a very compliant patient like she was earlier, and but she managed to shoulder on. Initially, Farhana was skeptical about using insulin. She was not sure how would she manage. Her husband supported her and gave her assurance on how to control her diabetes through medicines. My husband, me, ko bolte the, ap thoda weight badke jariye. थोड़ा वेट कम कर लीजिए या नहीं तो शुगर है डायबिटिक ऐसा डिजीज जो ही आपको अफेक्ट करेंगे वो मेरा बहुत केयर करते थे मेडिसिन लेने में डॉक्टर के पास जाके अभी कुछ एडवांस में है क्या मेरे को घर में भी मेरे 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 माँ मेरे अब्बा मेरे बहना भौने सब भी हैं सब मेरे हेल्पफुल हैं मेन आपको घर का सिटुएशन ज़रा थोड़ा रिलैक्स होना चाहिए कुछ भी टेंशन नहीं सो आराम से सब मिल रहने से हम ज्वाइंट फैमिली हैं सब मिल रहने से कुछ टेंशन नहीं है मेरे को आई हैव अ नंबर ऑफ young girls with type 1 diabetes and their family is always worried about what is going to happen to them who is going to marry them are they going to have their own family you know this is it becomes a big stigma they don't like to talk about it they keep it a big secret you know when they go out they have to give the insulin like in a in a secret place and i think this is the reason why people like farana has to the her story has to be heard for farana the only don't is never to miss her insulin even when she is sick the insulin not only controls the sugar but also keeps a particular acid in the blood under control we have to counsel saying no matter what happens don't miss your insulin injection even if you're throwing and vomiting even then you need insulin apart from that everything else in moderation a good healthy diet less of sugar less of fat high fiber and regular timings so that is important in people who are on insulin so there's no point in having your insulin injection and then waiting for one hour to eat that means your sugar levels drop so regular meal timings is important farana has been successfully handling her diabetes for years now and has managed to not only live a healthy but a happy life as well mai allah ke fazl se normal life jee rahi hu mere husband 10 years back chale gaye the इस इसके बाद मैं दो बच्चों दो लड़कियों को शादी करी और लड़के को पढ़ाई टेंशन लेने से थोड़ा ये होता है टेंशन नहीं लेना चाहिए वो एक साइड में है हम एक साइड में हैं हमारी लाइफ जीते हैं ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ द ब्रेक वी मीट टू पेशेंट्स हु आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम टाइप 2 डायबिटीज बट आर लिविंग अ हेल्दी एंड एन एक्टिव लाइफ